Hey everybody, HMV here, playing more Kerbal Space Program, Caveman Challenge, and uh, this is my jet car here. Uh, it's, it's, I'm rec recording this in post because I did this while I couldn't talk because I was doing the studio. But uh, this jet car, the whole purpose of it is to drive around the entire complex and get all the science. And, it, and I'm going to show you here basically what I do in order to uh, in order to do that. I turn on the engine, I drive somewhere, I put the brakes on. We take the science from these two things, do a crew report. Bob hops out, takes an EVA report, takes all the data out of everything, resets everything, stores all the data in one of the two capsules, takes a second reading from the Mystery Goo and the Materials Bay, stores them in the other pod, and then I repeat that at the Administration Building, the Astronaut Complex, the SPH, Mission Control, the VAB, the Crawlway, the Tracking Station, and finally, and Sunset, R&D. And that, along with a actual test run to Minmus, has allowed me to unlock these tech nodes. Um, the, the superstars of this are uh, the thermometer, fuel lines, bigger fuel tanks, and the Terrier engine. These are the big superstars of what I have unlocked. Now, I'll tell you this. I unlocked all of these by driving around K Kerbal Space Center. Um, I unlocked this by going to Minmus. And I'm sorry I didn't record that, but it was supposed to be a test run. And I realized about halfway through that I couldn't revert back to uh, launch because I had jumped to the Space Center due to some time warping. Um, because I was in orbit and I, you know, and I was in a low orbit and I couldn't time warp very fast. It would have taken like an hour <laughs> to time warp. So I went back to the Space Center, did my time warp, flew to Minmus, landed, brought Jeb home. He didn't do any science because I wasn't planning on him doing anything. I brought him home and then I landed him and then he got like 30 science points for returning a ship from Minmus. Um, and that allowed me to unlock this. So I'm going to, I'm going to take advantage of it, but I wasn't planning on having this, uh, thermometer or this battery. Um, but I have added them both to my craft just for the fun of it. And that craft is the kill me. This guy is nuts. Um, I added a battery to the top of him and I added a thermometer here. Um, he's got a single goo. He's got a single parachute. He's got a single, um, science junior and he has, is not <laughs> symmetrical. This guy's going to run out of fuel first. And as he does, the, the, Center of mass is going to shift this way, which already is a bit that way. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to thrust limit him down about 90, 90% or so. That'll get them going up roughly straight up. But as he drains, the, the ship is going to list to the left, and I'm going to need to slow him down as that happens too. And we definitely need to run through our checklist, which includes turning on the computer, cranking up the volume, going into map mode, bringing this up because we're going to be kind of hectic here on the launch, making sure everything's set up the way I like it so that we're going to be launching up this way, and I can see my apoapsis really well. Uh, and in three, two, one, launch! Okay, we're already a little bit listy, so I'm going to actually bring this down a little bit more. And I'm actually steering via throttling uh, this thing. <laughs> Actually, I'm surprised at how low I could throttle it, but I guess that makes sense. It's just um, one Reliant engine just doesn't have the thrust away to uh, to effectively to effectively get off the launch pad. So I needed two. And actually, these aren't even Reliants; they're swivels. Um, and I I've thought about it, and I think I'm gonna gonna throw this design away after this launch. I just mostly I wanted to show it to you because it's so cool. Um, but uh, I will likely, in the very near future, now as soon as this thing runs out of fuel, I gotta ditch it very quickly, because he he freaks out. There you go. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, a lot of launches, he will swing way down here and then way back up. Um, but uh, I noticed after I had designed this craft, I designed this craft kind of mostly before I had uh, unlocked all those tech tree nodes, and I didn't realize I was going to get the thumper. If I had realized that, I might have... Uh, I might have used two thumpers instead of uh, two swivels. Because the thumpers are lighter, but they have, like, two of those has more thrust than a single Reliant. And they might be the perfect engine for an 18-ton craft. Um, I just need to see what they're like uh, on the launch pad. 
And here we are uh, trying to get a lot of sideways momentum here before our fuel runs out, which it's going to very soon. I don't remember how much fuel we have in the main stage, but I think I usually get up to about 60 kilometers on my tests, of which I ran many. Oh, 53. So I actually did it very poorly. But maybe we're going faster. I don't know. Yeah, I think we are. Usually I was going around a kilometer a second. So we're actually we're actually going a lot faster than we were, which makes me happy. And I don't really care about the fire. There's there's not a lot of drag. I can't show it to you because I don't have the little drag button up here. I actually came back to show that to you. But uh Yeah, it's basically now there's there's nothing special about this. We're just going to get to orbit and uh I will see you there. Okay, we are at 74 by 81. We have a lot more fuel than I usually have. Usually I think I'm I'm in the lower hundreds when I get to orbit, which bodes well for this mission, to be honest. Um, okay, Minmus is right here, and we can't even set it as a target, which is hilarious. <laughs> but um, what we want to do here is here's how I um, get to Minmus without any maneuver nodes or anything. Um, you, we all know the the trick of of burning at sunrise to get to the moon. Um, I still I don't do that. I actually burn when moon's about here and I'm here, which means it's actually below the horizon. And I do the same thing for Minmus. Um, but with Minmus, you have to worry about the ascending and descending nodes, which can be a problem. Now, I don't know if you know this, but your arrow keys actually work in, uh, bat mode and they allow you to get a pretty good, um, nail, nail on right on the thing. You can also minus and plus to get, um, to zoom out a bit so that Minmus is available. Now, what I've done here is I've set myself up. So I'm looking straight on at Minmus and I'm coming up. It's, uh, what ascending node is right here relative to our orbit. So if I were to burn, whoops, uh, bring this down. If I were to burn right here, we would meet Minmus right here. And because we're burning at roughly the time when Minmus is at our 130, we're going to be up here right about the same time Minmus is. Now, we're probably maybe a day or two early, um, but we'll just burn up a little bit higher than Minmus's orbit. I'm, I, I'm not going to go to the, the tracking station like I did during my test flight. And, uh, and do that. Cause, you know, we've got a little bit of extra delta V. Um, might as well, get, might as well use it for the fun of all. So time warp is pretty much done. We've only used up two electric charge units, which is fine by me. So now we're just going to burn here. We're going to get our apoapsis up. Now, the funny thing is, if you zoom out enough to see Minmus's orbit, you lose your orbit. <laughs> if you zoom in enough to see your orbit, you lose Minmus's orbit, which is always fun. Fun for the whole family. But uh, as your orbit gets bigger, it'll actually show back up. It's just scary that you can't see it. I kind of wish the game would show it to you. I mean, I understand why, because it doesn't want to clutter up the screen with everybody's orbits. But still, it's, it's a bit annoying. You have to zoom kind of in a little bit, see it. And then zoom back out to compare it to Minmus, and then I think it's going to stay now. Yeah, it's going to stay now. But here we go. I'm going to be... I'm ready on the X key. That's probably perfect. Might be a little bit low, or a little bit high, I should say. So I'm going to bring it back just a little bit. Right about there. We can always burn when we're up there just to kind of hang around in the area. Okay. We're at 50 units of fuel left. But Minmus, oh, I'm actually a little bit scared now. I'm going to actually, yeah, see, we can't even set Minmus as a target, but we should be able to see it. There it is. I'm going to go into locked mode. I'm actually going to thrust at Minmus. That's bad. Uh, I'm going to thrust sideways now. This might be a failed mission. <laughs> Let's try this. There we go. Okay, as long as we're in Minmus's sphere of influence, I'm, I'm happy. Okay, now we're going to burn ourselves retrograde here. Uh, do we want to go retrograde or radial? How about we split the difference? between the two. I think retrograde's better now. Get 
getting a little concerned about fuel. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of this was supposed to be done uh, near periapsis, and we've done it time warp too far. <laughs> Let's go ahead and. Now we're going to burn our periapsis down to about here. I think we're going to be fine, actually, on fuel. Let's burn it down to 7 kilometers. That's probably fine. I think now is a good time to hit F5. We are orbiting Minmus backwards, but who cares about that? Minmus is, Minmus is pretty um, forgiving with the uh, Delta V here. Uh, I think this is as good a place as any. Sorry about the crazy camera angles. This is as good a place as any to land. Uh, actually, that's as good a place as any to land. I like that spot a lot. So let's go ahead and time warp ourselves a bit. I think we can eschew map mode from now on. Uh, the sun is pretty much directly overhead. Kind of wish we could see our shadow. I'm always happier when I can see my shadow. I've only got 19 units of fuel. I am more than a little concerned. We don't have any uh, transmission devices on this ship. Yeah, my shadow should be over here somewhere. Oh, there it is. I'm trying to be as efficient as I possibly can be with this burn. I still think we're going to be okay with fuel, even though it looks like we're on the dregs. <laughs> um, I don't have any proof of that or any reason to think that. I just do. Whoops. Oh, that's not going to help. No more full thrust, that's for sure. We're down to 10 units of fuel. We hopefully can keep most of that for the return home. Okay. And we are just going to land this thing on its side. Uh, like so. Actually, we'll land it on its back. We're just going to let it let it bring itself down and then turn off SAS. Okay, uh, Val. Uh, I probably should have uh, been checking out contracts, shouldn't I? Um, let's go ahead and do that right now. Because I honestly don't think we're ever going to need to worry about money. Gather scientific data from Minmus. Let's go ahead and accept that. I don't think we're ever going to get the Explore Minmus contract, sadly, because we landed on it already. Okay, Val. In the Kill Me Craft. Because <laughs> we're going to get scientific data from Minmus. We're going to observe the... Oh, I just realized she can't hop out. So I don't know why I was, like, saving her. Let's observe the mystery goo here. Then let's go ahead and do a crew report. And we are ready to go. Let's go ahead and launch this thing back up. Uh, we are going to, oh, we're going to aim you at the 90. See what the, see what the 90 looks like. Looks pretty good. And then we're going to hit T and then Z. We are getting right over on the horizon because we need an as efficient a launch as we can get. That's pretty good. 14 kilometers. We gotta get over 3,000 before we can uh, time warp, but at least we can four times time warp. We are, yeah, she is not coming home. She actually might not make it into orbit. And we can't rescue her because we're never gonna get claws or anything or any way to uh, get out of the ship. So this is a failure. You have seen my first failure. We are, we are leaving Val in orbit of Minmus with no chance of ever getting home. Dang it. I, yeah, it's, it's the fact that I didn't encounter Min Mist and I had to use extra fuel to get there. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to design a new ship. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to try to actually, uh, 
get Val into orbit. Um, if I can't, we're going to watch her die because she can't even hop out and use her jetpack. I think she's going to die. <laughs> oh, actually, wait. I don't need to be in physics warp anymore. Okay. Last of our fuel. <laughs> we are technically in orbit. Um, and I think she's safe, actually. I think seven, seven kilometers is safe on Minmus. Let's assume it is. Uh, okay, I am going to cut this out. I am going to spend who knows how long designing a new ship. Tell you what, I'm actually going to end this episode here because uh, it's been a long time since I've since I've uploaded an episode. I've just been so busy and I finally have time now. So you're going to see more episodes coming out. And also, yay, I fixed the studio. Uh, at least I hope this sounds pretty good. Um, but anyway, we're going to we're going to send Jeb up to do what Val couldn't um, on a new ship that ideally is going to have two thumpers uh, running it. So we'll see how that works. And if not, uh, maybe three thumpers. Who knows? Hope you enjoyed watching this. Definitely enjoyed playing it. I'm HMV and I will, as always, talk at you later.